the PlayStation 4 firmware 12.52 exploit has finally arrived. Let's see what it can do. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. A brand new PlayStation 4 exploit has just been released, allowing us to mod consoles up to and including 12.52. Now this was released just one day ago, um, here at the end of November 2025. So if you've been stuck waiting on a firmware's 12.50 or 12.52, well your, your wait is now over. Unfortunately though, if you have already updated to 13.00 or 13.02 or if there are some new ones between now and when you've watched this video, um, you are going to have to wait for the next exploit to come out. Uh, but please do make sure that you turn off the automatic updates on your console so that you don't um, go any higher up on those firmwares. Again, that just makes sure that you have uh, as short a wait as possible. And again, at the start of this video, I'm going to take you through how to turn off those automatic updates. Now this new exploit, it uses the same Blu-ray disc um, entry point that the previous LAP exploit um, used. So um, you will need access to either a Blu-ray disc writer, um, or I I'm pretty sure that there will be a few budding entrepreneurs who will very quickly bring these discs out onto eBay and other places like that for you to very quickly buy. And if, if anything goes like the LAPS exploit, then those will come on the market at around about sort of five pounds, ten pounds. Um, so, so not that expensive. So, if you're all ready to go, let's go through the exploit right from the very start. So, first off, we're going to get a few things set up on our console, including turning off those automatic updates. So, first, we need to go through the normal blocking and cancelling firmware updates. So, go to your settings option, and then go down to network and then turn off your internet connection. So if we then go back out to our settings, and this time go to System and Automatic Downloads, and here we need to turn off all of these update options, and that will just really stop our console from going off and trying to update its firmware to the latest version. So if we now go back out to the system settings again, and now scroll down to this option here for Enable HDCP. Now you need to make sure that this option is turned on, otherwise the PlayStation 4 won't be able to play Blu-ray discs. So lastly then, we need to go back out to our XMB, and then go to our Notifications page, and then go to our Download section. Now if there are any firmware updates listed, or any of them are downloading at the moment, then just highlight them and press the Options button to allow you to delete them. So we now need to make our Blu-ray disc. So the software for this is available on this GitHub repository. So again, I'll, I'll put links to that down in the description. So if you go across to there, you'll, you'll find out sort of the, the files and so on. Um, but we really want to go across to the um, Releases section over here on the side. And you can see there we've only got version 1. So if you scroll down, you'll find here there is an ISO file. Um, now this is only 1.7 megabytes, um, so obviously it doesn't put very much onto the Blu-ray disc, but it does need to go onto a Blu-ray disc. Um, your PlayStation 4 will not run this from either a DVD or a CD drive. So all we need to do is to download that ISO file, and then just save that somewhere sensible on your PC. Now, although, although this is just a 1.7 megabyte file, um, you'll see up here it does include both of the pre of the two latest exploits. So the LAPS exploit, which um, works up to 12.02 firmware, and then this new what, what's called the Poops exploit. Um, it, it was named that by the developer that they get to choose the name, um, and that works of course from 9.00 up to 12.52. It also then does include the payload package, the gold hen, all built into this one um, Blu-ray drive image. So there is nothing else that you need. And of course, you can then choose which of these two exploits you want to run when you pop the, the, the Blu-ray disc into your console. 
Uh, the choices between them, um, the, the lapse exploit does have a higher success rate. Uh, so, so when you run these exploits, sometimes they do fail and you have to restart your PlayStation 4. Um, that, that, that's just the way these things work. So the lapse is, is, will more reliably get it working um, than the poops. Uh, but either way, um, it's up to you. And of course, if you are on 12.50 or 12.52, then you will have to use the poops version. So once we've got that ISO file downloaded, of course, we're going to have to burn it onto a Blu-ray disc. Now, that does need to be a Blu-ray disc, uh, and the Blu-ray disc needs to be either a, um, a BDR or a BDRE. Um, please do not use any of the um, high-density Blu-ray discs. Um, the PlayStation 4 will just not be able to, to read those. Uh, for doing that, I tend to use this image burn software, which seems to give a very reliable image. And it also then has a lot more options than the built-in Windows system. Uh, if you're working on either a Mac or a Linux system, then obviously just use a good quality image burning software for that. It doesn't really matter what um, computer you're working on. Um, the image it will be the same either way. So if we now boot up image burn, um, all I need to do is I need to write an image file to the disk. I need to go and find my file and of course that's just the ISO file that we downloaded. Uh, make sure that I'm obviously talking to my Blu-ray writer. Um, the speed then again um, because it's such a small one um, it's, it's worth dropping the speed down so you get a more reliable copy onto your drive. So I'm just going to drop mine down to two times here. I'm going to leave the verify mode turned on uh, and that's pretty much it. I just need now to burn that drive that, that, that image onto my drive. So that little jingle means that our disc is fully completed. So let's jump on to our PlayStation. So you just need to pop the Blu-ray disc into the drive. Now you should see the disc popping up on your XMB. So if you now highlight that and select it to play it, you'll either get the exploit running or you'll get a message saying the Blu-ray playback hasn't been enabled. So, so if, you, if you get this error message, um, you'll need to go back up to your settings menu and then go to network and turn the internet connection back on again. Now, now at this point, of course, we are safe turning that back on because we have disabled our automatic updates. But once that's turned on, you'll then need to go back to the main XMB and then try the disk a second time. Now you might get the same message popping up again, so just OK that. But you then will probably get a message asking to be allowed to connect to the internet. So say yes to that and you should find the Blu-ray drive will then download its software and it should then start the exploit. Now, if this is the very first time you've used the Blu-ray drive, then you'll probably get this button guide. So just press the back key and then that should start the exploit running. So this first screen, you should see that we now have the option to either run the lapse exploit by pressing the X button or the poops exploit by running by pressing the circle button. Uh, obviously, um, my firmware here is showing up as 12.02 because I do not actually want to upgrade myself to 12.52. I'm just going to keep mine there. But we are going to run the poops exploit, so I'm going to press the circle button now, and we should see that firing off. Now, as I said, the poops exploit um, does fail more often than the lapse exploit, so we've actually got a fail here. Um, there will be a couple of different failures, uh, so some will say just to restart the exploit. Um, we've actually got a fail here where it's going to need me to actually reboot the PlayStation 4. So let me just go and reboot the PlayStation 4. So I'm coming back out of here with the, with the PlayStation button and then going across and, of course, just doing a normal restart. So back up and running again, we just need to reopen the Blu-ray disc and then let's just see if that does the same. So starting up, it's then asking me what I want to do, so I'm going to press my circle button. And there we have a successful exploit. And you can hear in the background we have some notifications going on telling us that our gold hen payload has been installed and our FTP server is all set up and so on. So, so that's our console fully modded. So let's do just a little bit of setting up on the gold hen side just to make sure we've got everything as we want it.
So first off, if you haven't re-enabled your internet connection yet, make sure you go back into your settings and network and connect back up to the internet. Now, the connecting to the internet once you have uh, modded your console, uh, so, so Gold Hen itself um, actually loads a update blocker, so you are totally safe from having your firmware overwritten with any new things. It will it will actually block that for you, and that is even if you haven't got Gold Hen enabled, it's it's persistent, so that um, as soon as you turn the console on, it runs, and it, I say it is very effective then at stopping your console uh, automatically. Um, uploading a new update for it. We're now going to go into the actual Gold Hen settings. So if we come down to settings, there's a couple of bits in here which are very wor worthwhile turning on. So the rest mode support. So the Gold Hen or the sort of um, poops exploit, it's non-persistent. So once you reset or, or reboot the console, the actual exploit is removed from memory and you do then have to come back in again and reopen the Blu-ray disc to activate it. Uh, but of course you have got something called rest mode on the PlayStation 4. Uh, so what this does is it makes sure that the gold hand payload stays active whilst in rest mode. So you can go, you can leave the console, uh, it got, it go into rest mode. When you come back and restart the console, um, again, uh, sorry, waking it up from rest mode, um, then gold hand will still be active. So it, it saves you having to rework uh, and re-put in that Blu-ray disc and, and opening it. Next one then is the Blu-ray disc app auto kill. So once you um, have a successful exploit by opening up the Blu-ray drive, what this does here, it will automatically close the Blu-ray disc app so that you don't have to come back out and close it manually. So um, say so that, that is worth having on as well, just to save you an extra few button clicks. So I, I tend to put both of those on. Next one then is up in the server settings. Uh, Gold Hen does have an FTP server and a bin load server. So the FTP server allows you to transfer files across to your console from your computer or over your Wi-Fi network or, or Ethernet. Uh, so that is well worth turning on. The, the bin loader server then is used for adding in various payloads and stuff. Um, so you may or may not use that depending on what you want to do with your console. Um, so I, I don't currently have that turned on. But again, it, it's there if you need to use that functionality. So after that then, well really it's now down to loading in some homebrew applications and some package files. So I do have a number of videos which show you how to do that and how to get the most out of your PlayStation 4, uh, but I'm just going to take you through just the very basics now of, of loading in some homebrew applications, loading in a game, so at least you can get started and then go off and say, have some further research on those other videos. So adding homebrew apps and games to your PlayStation 4 really revolves around using package files. So I have a disk here. So to get the files across to our PlayStation 4, we can either use FTP or, or, or we can use a USB drive. So I have a USB drive here. If I look at the properties of that, um, you'll see I'm actually using an SSD drive here. So this is a 500 gigabyte SSD drive and that then has a USB adapter plugged into that. So I have that formatted in XFAT, so it, um, it can handle large files. And, and that's really how you need your USB drive set up. So any USB drive at all, but it needs to be formatted as an XFAT drive. So on that drive then, in the root of the drive, so this is in the, in the root of the drive, I have a number of package files. So, so I have a game file here. I have a game update file. I have a couple of DLC package files. And then I have a homebrew app package file. Now this homebrew app, this homebrew app here is the homebrew store. So if I come across and have a look over here, um, there is a website called packagezone.com and that is really handy for any homebrew apps for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. So if you go up to the um, on the homepage, if you go to the homebrew store drop down up here, you'll see there is a download for the PlayStation 4. And if you click on that, that will basically download um, this package file here. So all we do is we get hold of our package files. So the game package files and DLCs, they have to be what's known as fake packages. Uh, so the 
original game files need to be slightly repackaged um, to allow them to be installed without any sort of copy protection and so on onto your PlayStation 4. Now, I, I have made a complete video on, on how that works, so, so do please make sure you have a look at that. Uh, at the moment, I'm just going to assume that we have these files. Uh, obviously, the big question is where to get hold of these files. Now, obviously, on YouTube, I'm not allowed to tell you where to get hold of those, uh, but I do produce a project web page on my main bitsandbits.co.uk website for every single video I do. Uh, so, obviously, on there, and I'll put a link down in the description, on there, uh, I can be a bit more helpful. So, do have a look at that. But we're going to take this USB drive now and plug it into our PlayStation 4. So back on our console, we do have to enable our hack. So again, I just opened our Blu-ray disc and you can see we have Gold Hen already running here. So if we go into our Gold Hen system and into our debug settings, you should see here that we have something called a package installer. And, and, and that's what's going to install these um, bits of software for us. So, so our package source at the moment is set to our USB drive. If, if, if you put your package files elsewhere, you can obviously come in here and, and, and go and find that. But I'm just going to run it off my USB drive. So if I go and start the package installer, it'll have a look on my USB drive, and we should then see all of the packages that I put in that root folder. So all we need to do now is to select those. Uh, we can either do it one by one, or you can see at the top there we have an install all option. So I'm just going to run that. And what that does now um, is it's going to go through each of those packages in turn, and then install them onto my internal hard drive. So once those have finished installing, we can come back out to our main XMB, and then we should find our new software sitting in there. So if we have a look first at our homebrew store, so once we boot that up, it is going to go through a little bit of downloading to get itself all set up. And then it'll drop you into this system here. And really what this is for, so we, we've seen that to get our homebrew apps onto our PlayStation 4, we need to download package files, copy them across, and then install them with our package installer. But using the homebrew app, you, you can actually just simply browse them online. So this is a, a whole set then of, of homebrew apps that you can install. And all you do is simply find the one you want and just click on it and it will automatically download the package file for you and then install it. So again, an, an incredibly useful tool for all of your homebrew stuff. So we also installed a game, so Resident Evil, and all we have to do is just simply select that, and that game is all installed and ready to play. And if you remember, we did actually install a couple of DLCs, so we did install some costumes in here. So if we come down, we can have a look and see those. So there is the um, Leon 98 costume there, which again is a bit of a throwback to the original versions. And of course, for Claire, we did install the Her No Wire outfit. So again, all of our DLC content as well is already there and installed. So that should give you everything you need to get up and running with your Blu-ray Poops exploit for firmware versions up to 12.52. So again, do make sure you check out my other PlayStation 4 videos. I'll put a link to my um, playlist in the description. Uh, so have go through there. Again, you can use this for making sure you know how to get hold of games, install them, and of course then going on to play sort of PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and retro consoles and everything. There's a whole range of things you can do with a home-brewed PlayStation 4. So hope you found this useful. Please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for lots more gaming, modding, electronics and making projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out this video and this playlist for loads more projects and tutorials just like this one. Have fun and I'll see you soon.